So we welcome Captain Emma to this podcast special. Hi, Emma. Hello. Lovely to see you again. And you, yeah. So we're here. We're here to, to talk about Emma's amazing new book, or Grounded, which is a, a, a very smart title, actually, knowing how the circumstances that he wrote it. But this is a chance for you to talk about it. And we want all of you listening to, to buy it because... As you know, Captain Emma does tons in the Love Fly Facebook group, and she's been on the me in media quite a bit recently, talking about the Singapore Airlines turbulence stuff and the the way the media uh, reported it. I saw her say on that, and uh, yeah, so we all of this she does just out of the the goodness of her heart. So let's get behind her and, and the books. I'm not just saying this just for the, it's not a charity thing. It is a going to be a good book. Because you know what Emma's like, but this is a chance to hear a little bit about it and perhaps whet your appetite. Thank you for that, Paul. And just before I start, I just want to say I, the reason I support the Love Fly community is because I genuinely want to help you to fly. I really want to help you to get over whatever it is that you are fearful of. And because I have thirty years and more of knowledge of aviation, having started flying, you know in 1992 um which you can read about in the book oh nice um i just want to share that with you when 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 i can to help you to understand things without you having to train to become pilots so that's the first thing i love this community please do buy the book because that would be fantastic um it would be great to become a bestseller so um the, the thinking the the way the book came about is Basically, in 2020, we all know what happened there. And I was grounded. <laughs> I was grounded. See what I did there? Uh, seamless. <laughs> and, and when I was and, and founded the charity, Project Wingman, which I've been running for the last four years, and I was made MBE for that. And on the back of that, I got a lot of podcasts and interviews and people asked me to come and speak to them. And I am now a professional speaker. So I now go and speak to groups of people, either about my journey mm. through aviation or about the lessons I've learned from aviation, you know, leadership lessons and mindset and things like that. Because that people said, God, your story is so interesting. I'd really like to know more. And Several people said, you know what you should do? You should write a book. I thought, yeah, that's, yeah, everyone's got a book in them. But I actually did sit down and write it. So I actually started writing it in 2020 before the MB and everything. I just decided that I knew I was on this kind of trajectory where I probably wasn't going to go back to fly and certainly not in the way I had been before. So if you mm. don't know, I live in the north of Scotland on what we call the Murray Riviera and I was working in Gatwick. And I was having to commute by air. So it meant I was away from home a lot. And I wasn't loving that. I was careering towards my menopause and just thinking, no, enough. Get off the hamster wheel. So I started to write it down really because there were things I wanted to remember. I wanted to go back and be able to look at and think, oh, yeah, you know, that was a brilliant day. And that was a brilliant <laughs> story. And, and, you know, I've gathered a lot of fun and stories over the years as well. So I started to write it in lockdown. And I was introduced through a university, an old university friend. I said, look, I'm writing a book. How do I do that? You know, can you put me in touch with someone? Hmm. And he had worked in publishing. He's now a teacher, but he had worked in publishing. And he put me in touch with an agent who said, who signed me on the spot. He said, this is a great story. We planned our world movie tour. I was going to play myself in the movie, obviously. <laughs> and we, he, he said to me, look, these are the 10 areas of interest that I think you should write about. Give me 3,000 words on each and we'll take it from there. So he got like eight or 9,000 words on some chapters because they were huge for me. Mm. It was a very cathartic process because I was basically just writing down stuff that's happened to me over the years. And if you yes. don't know, that includes uh, my brother's accident that left him paralyzed. He had a motorbike accident, you know. And this is my first year of flying, uh, first year of flying, sorry, for an airline. My brother, my husband got diagnosed with an illness that has changed the course of his life. House caught fire, not this one, but my mum and dad, they got rid of the aircraft my husband was flying on. And this is always while I was trying to learn my craft in the right-hand seat of a passenger jet. Yes. But it wasn't the only challenge. Yeah, I faced challenges 
throughout the course of my career. And that's really what the book's about. It's not like, oh God, when this happened and poor old Emma, you know, it's literally like, I have a favorite saying, which is the devil whispered in my ear, you're not strong enough to withstand the storm. And I whispered back, I am the storm. And people who know me go, yep, you are the storm. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of, um, it, it grew from that really. And, and actually the agent that I had, he was a lovely guy we met a few times in London, but he wasn't able to sell the book. So, you know, something like 180 new titles get published every single day. So it's really hard to get Is it that many? It's a huge number. Yeah. Wow. Um, and that's worldwide, obviously, but that's a huge number of books. And everyone thinks their book's the best. Mine actually is, so quiet. But uh, <laughs> um, so so the story kind of, I, I then had this book, I had this manuscript, and I was like, oh, I don't really know what to do with that now. And my husband had gone to school with a guy who has published a few books, and he said, can you introduce my wife to your publisher? And he did. And the publisher loved the story and the fact I already had a manuscript. And he said, let's publish it, see what happens. So there's been, that's been a process, obviously. You know, this started in 2020. It's now 2024. Ooh. And last weekend, this arrived Ooh. at my house. And this oh, is so my book. Exciting. And, it's, and, and I love it because it's it's got a lovely cover. It's got, yeah. um, got recommendations on the back from people in the industry. It feels really nice. It's a it's a book sized book, you know, and it's got a matte cover. It's got a nice feel to it, and I just I'm really proud of it. I'm really yeah. delighted with it. Yeah. And what's really lovely about it is that my son has read it already, and he he wouldn't. Yeah, my kids keep me grounded. They are literally they keep me my feet on the ground all the time. And my husband does, but my, my son has read it and he said, Mum, I genuinely love reading this book. Thank you for writing it. Oh, oh that's, that's it. That's all you need, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It, but then I've also got five star reviews on Amazon from people that I don't know, including this is the best book I've read for a while, which is fantastic oh, because yeah. I don't know who's written that, but it's really lovely to hear that people yes. aren't just buying it because they're my mate and they feel sorry for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if you feel sorry for me. Still buy it anyway. Yeah, yeah, buy it. I'll, I'll take that. Just, just buy it. Good to say. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So give us a little bit of uh, an idea. So some people might not anything, know anything about Wingman. Wingman. So perhaps a two minute on that. And, and I know, I, I imagine people, because I heard about it before I'd even met you. But then I am in the aviation industry, so it's yeah. possible that that's why. But. Well, it was in the news and stuff, so it was it was a big it was a big item, wasn't it? A big media item, and a really positive story that was going on during the pandemic. So, but yeah, give us a two minute skinny on that. I think that's what made people fall in love with with Wingman, actually. So in in twenty twenty, we were grounded, and I you did it again. I've done it again. You see that that's why. So this book was supposed to be called when I wrote it. It was called Folding My Wings, and I hope this is okay to say. One of my friends pointed out that that sounded a little bit like an advert for always. <laughs> so, I didn't go with that. But but yeah, when we were grounded in 2020, I knew that the NHS was facing a massive challenge. We all knew that. I also knew that air crew need to be needed, one wanted to do something to help. And literally, because I was a peer support mentor at my airline, I also knew that we were equipped to, we, you know, we, we have the ability to look after people. When people come board, on board an aircraft, our cabin crew, for example, don't know if you're nervous or if you are going for work or if you're going for a holiday or if you're going for a funeral or you're going because someone's sick or because you're going to meet a new boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever. But you're welcomed on board as an equal person, regardless of any status mm. that you have. When you come on board, you're all passengers to us. Um, and in the same in the hospital, when you come into a wingman land, you're all the same to us. We don't care if you're a consultant, anaesthetist, or you clean the bins. As far as we're concerned, you are important. Yes. And that's where it came from, this idea that because we're used to caring for people, we could go into hospitals and provide people initially with tea and empathy and just say, have a cup of tea, sit down, take the weight off your feet for five minutes. We will look after you. And that's what we did in 104 lounges across the UK two in New York City, 
and six and a half thousand. Every, I don't know how you did it, honestly. Every, well, I think because I had the platform, because that's so I just going back a bit further. I had been in an ITV documentary called Inside the Cockpit, where I became known as Captain Emma. And that's why I always sign off my messages, Captain Emma, and then I love and I fly, you know. So um, I hope you get what I do there, by the way, with that. It's a love I, play. I get it. I get it. I appreciate it. Yes. I, I, I always have blue hearts in my thingies. Yes. Yes. And um, someone else has, has the bing bong, which is great. Yes. So um, I became Captain Emma and I, I became known as that. So I had a platform and it made me well known in the airline industry, in my airline and in other airlines as well. So it was basically just a case of me having an idea at the same time as a whole bunch of other people were going, I don't really know what to do with myself. And not all of it was altruistic. You know, lots of people absolutely signed up to help. Some people signed up to get out of their flat because they couldn't leave. Yeah. unless they were doing something like this and and that's okay with me yes absolutely it's actually what we created alongside the whole project ring man looking after nhs staff was our own air crew community supporting each other through redundancies and aircraft airlines going bankrupt and we lost people you know people killed themselves over this yeah and but but also people got married as a result of wingman. People have had babies, not necessarily as a result of wingman, but we've had wing babies and we've had wing weddings and we've had <laughs> have lost people, but we've celebrated the wings that the wins along the way as well. So it's been an amazing thing. I think it just was the right idea at the right time, and it really gathered momentum quickly and captured the hearts of everybody who mm. got involved, which was just incredible. From my end, I was sitting here not with that behind me, but sitting here just 18 hours a day trying to keep on top of everything. And that was hard for my family. So, yeah, you know. I think you did, I, I think it's remarkable what you achieved. I, you know, I, I look, used to look on and see you all around the place, opening languages. I just think, okay, how on earth, what's this woman made of? And, uh, <laughs> and then you had all these lots of people. I, I remember people saying to me, when you weren't there, like countless people would say it was literally the difference for their mental health that during that time and and i can see why you know because you a lot of people lost their purpose and, and you gave them that back that is so wonderful to hear and it makes me feel quite emotional actually because i think when you're in the thick of doing something like that yeah you know, it benefited my mental health don't be mm. under any illusions about that you know i i struggled as you're reading the book I didn't pass my command first time. I, I fought to, to get where I was. Not because anybody squashed me down, just because I made mistakes, you know. And yeah. so, you know, I was lost at the beginning of 2020. I'm not going to lie. I could see that something big was happening and throwing myself into something like Project Wingman mm -hmm. was a really it was beneficial to my mental health as well. And the friendships that have been forged because of it for life have been... They've, they've kept me going sometimes, you know. There have been times when I've stepped on an aircraft with a wingman badge on and somebody's come up to me and said, I just want to let you know that I volunteered for that and thank you so much. People have told me that it saved them and I feel very emotional when I think about that. Yeah, that's a... That is a... And there are words, really, Emma. I mean, it's, it's remarkable what you pioneered. Well, thank you. And, and I... I took a long time to accept my part in that because I often I know you used to bat it off I've said I've said something they complimented you before and you're like oh, uh. well I have I've often said well you know it's everyone else that's doing the work and actually you know I look back over the last four and a half years and think yeah everyone else has done the work but so have I and yes. I understand that you know people will do things for people who are courageous leaders yeah. and that's what's led to my new career really with with, with writing the book is is partly a way of explaining to people why I'm qualified to come and talk about leadership and mindset and and, and overcoming challenges. Mm. And um and actually on the just going back to the wingman, I'm writing another book. The next book is going to be telling the wingman story. But it's going to be telling it through not just my eyes, but the eyes of people who got involved. And I want to know why people got involved and what it's meant to them. Because I think that's a really powerful story. And Every single story won't make it into the book, but every mm -hmm. single story can have a place on the website. And I think that's yeah. a really fantastic legacy to keep. Uh, that is awesome.
Oh, well, I've got another podcast on that as well. So um, tell us a, a couple of the things in the book that we can look, look forward to. So you've got, well, obviously there's a leadership message in there. And... There is a leadership message in there. 100%. Um... What else is it about? If I was if I was listening to it on head, headway, uh, what would be the, uh, the 14 minute? Well, you will be able to because I'm going to be recording the audio book. So I've got... I've been given this, I haven't got to work yet, but I've been given this to use to record the audio book. <laughs> and um, so it will be available eventually. It, it's, it's out in softback and Kindle now, and it will be hardback in a few weeks, and then audio book in the autumn. But the best way to describe this, really, is by reading you one of the reviews <clears throat> that I was really, that I was really touched to receive, actually. Because it's from a colleague that I really respect in on the speaker circuit. And she said, this book is about a woman's journey to become an airline captain. But it delivers much, much more than just flying stories. It's about how to face your fears, how to lead, how to deal with failure, and above all, how to do it with humour and class. It epitomises how to aim high whilst keeping your feet firmly on the ground, devour it and learn from it. Aww. And that was Sarah Furness, who is a former helicopter pilot who is quite successful on the speaker circuit and and that really that really touched me that she read the book and she spoke of it like that and I just saw that that's what it is it's 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 my story and it's my story it's not just a case of uh, yeah then this happened next and then this happened next so there's a chapter about I mean the acknowledgements to be fair are a chapter in themselves (laughs) so um because you know I might never write a book again I'm hoping I will but um there's a chapter telling you about my beginnings um, into aviation, you know, how I got into aviation, how how actually my airline journey ended is another chapter. There's another one about um, in, called Unforecast Turbulence. And obviously I wrote the book before the last couple of weeks. It's not about turbulence. I'm, I'm sorry to be a yeah, spoiler alert there. It's about something yeah. that happened to me that I was not expecting and yeah. I nearly died. And the fact that I didn't die, I am sitting mm. here talking to you. It wasn't because of an airline accident or anything like that. It, read the book and you'll find out. But that's called Unforecast Turbulence. And there's one about um, not getting command first time. So it's about failure, but it's not about failing. It's about rising again and how you learn from failure and mm. how failure defines you. It doesn't define you, it refines you. So... Um, but there's also some funnies in there. You know, there's tales from the flight deck. There's um, a story about how unglamorous, yeah, everybody thinks that it must be a very glamorous world flying an aircraft, and it can be, but it also has its unglamorous moments, and there's some stories about that. There's um, a chapter about we got invited as part of Wingman to go to Westminster Abbey for the first Royal Carol service. Mm. I came eye to eye with Wills and Kate, or... His Royal Highness and um, Her Royal Highness probably should be a bit more respectful, shouldn't I? But um, I should. I did curtsy when I saw them. And, um, you know, so I've I've been really lucky to experience some pretty amazing things. Mm. Not just as a part of um, Wingman, actually, but just throughout my life because, you know, we moved. I'm a military wife. I don't know if people know that. My husband's a wing commander in the Air Force. I don't call him sir. <laughs> I think he'd like me to. But I would never do. And uh, <laughs> so we um, we've moved all over. The, well, we've we've lived in New Zealand and we've moved all over the UK as part of his job. And I've followed him as as as, as we do as very good, well behaved military wives. Except I'm not one of the well behaved ones because I went and got my own career and said, "Well, I'll come with you, sort of." But I'm going yes. to do my thing. So yes. you know. And, uh, but you know, there's the, the we talk, I, I talk in the book about traveling to New Zealand and living there for three and a half years. And that's where I learned to fly mm. with three small children, aged three, five, no, five, three, and 20 months they were when we moved there. Yeah. And the last one's just moving to Edinburgh to work. She's got a job starting in a couple of weeks' time. So, you know, it was a long time ago now, but it was an incredibly life changing moment for me, not just from because I came back as a, Fully qualified commercial pilot, but because I went away as somebody who hid behind the children, and I think that a lot of women will listen to this, will identify with this. 
I hid behind the children because they'd be on my hips. And if I didn't really know what to say to somebody, I would just sort of pay the child some attention. And I went and I was very much my parents' daughter. You know, I grew up as the daughter of a big fish in a small pond. I was always Jerry's daughter. And when I moved to New Zealand, I didn't know any. I knew my brother who lived a couple of hours north, but I didn't have any friends there. I didn't know yeah. anyone. So I could not reinvent myself in a weird, creepy sort of way, but. I, I had to find out, I had to really dig deep and go, well, who actually am I? Who is Emma Henson? Mm. But years before that, I'd been introducing myself. People would say, oh, are you Jim's wife? And I'd say, no, I am married to Jim, but I am Emma. So I always had a very clear sense of who I was. Mm. But, you know, so New Zealand was a really defining moment for me in terms of just personal development and finding out who I was. And there's some other parts of the book that you'll read and go, yeah, I can see how that would be um, a defining moment in your life. Yeah. And I'm going to read it. I don't read too many books now because I get this, this app that summarises them so I can smash through two or three in a day and get the basics of it. And then if I really want to know, I'll go and then I speed read them. Uh, so I don't properly read books anymore. But I'm going to read yours in normal speed. Yeah. Well, please do for two reasons. I won't even get a ruler out and do that way, you know, like some kind of <laughs> double the speed. Well, firstly, I'd love you to do that because... I want you to read the story, obviously. But actually, I'd love you to do that because we should all spend more time reading books. Mm -hmm. We spent so much time just head down into our phones. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to lecture anyone about that. I'm as bad as anyone else. But I just think we need to slow down a bit. And, and I read a lot of books. You know, all of those books there are books I've read. And I've got bookshelves all through our house. We've got so many books. It's ridiculous. Now, children keep saying, you do know that when you die, we're just going to have to spend hours clearing those out, don't you? <laughs> nice. I dare you. <laughs> you know, I just, this is magic to reading for me. But mm. even though I take a Kindle with me on holiday because I can't carry all the, I see all the weight on a, you know, in the cabin. So I do read on a Kindle on holiday, but I love to feel a book in my hands. I just yes. love turning pages and, you know, I, and I particularly love this one because it just feels so nice when, you know that you know. I will read this book myself, even though I've written it, and even though I've proofread it, and even though I've read the manuscript. I I will sit down and read it because, actually, I look at it now and I think, gosh, you know, it's, it's great for me to remember correctly things. Fantastic journal, now. isn't it? Yeah, kind of a journal that I hope that people really gain something from because I really hope people go away from it understanding that you know, we all have so much more in us than we ever think is possible. And that's really the message of the book. Yeah. Love that. So how do they get it? Mainly Amazon, is it? Uh, may, at the moment, it's mainly on Amazon. So you can find it on Amazon. If you type in Grounded, you probably don't even need to type in Emma Henderson because it's been searched for quite a lot now. If you type in Grounded by Emma Henderson, you will find the book and it is available worldwide. So if you're mm. on if you're on dot com, Amazon.com, co.uk, co.nz, wherever you live, it's printed locally, it's print on demand, and it's available locally. It is filtering into bookshops. It will take some time for it to go into yeah. bookshops. My local independent bookshops are about to stock it, which is fabulous. And I'm trying to work out a way that I can do signed copies. So I am going to be going to visit places. And when I do that, I will let people know where I'm going to be if you want to come along and get a signed copy. But I think one of my local bookshops might be a conduit for that. So I'll let you know if you want a signed copy. If yeah, there's yeah. Anything that. But for the time being, get your copy on Amazon. Get it on Kindle if you want to. I don't mind if it's digital or softback. Um, it will be out in hardback, as I say, in a few weeks' time as well. And I'm about to start, very excitingly, recording the audiobook. And there was a great, I think it was a TikTok that Richard Branson did recently, or Richard Branson's daughter did, because he's just recorded his own book. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to do some social media around that. So I'm going to set up my phone so that I can film me doing a bit of recording sometimes so you can see how that's going. Yeah. Quite excited about that. Yeah. Maybe it's a microphone with a thing in front of it to stop the... <laughs> Apparently that's what that disc is for. Yes. Yeah, it's... Uh, you got to just clean it every now and then. But it's... um, 
it's a bit of a labour of love doing the, the, doing your own audio book, but it's I definitely think it, that'll be a great addition to it because then people can hear you and you'll put in inflection that we won't necessarily get when we read it with, you, with your voice in our head or our own voices. So, yeah. so I, I mean, think it's a good, not... great idea. Great. Right. Well, well, you know, then you can't really have a book and not have an audio book, can you? No, exactly. So listen, you, you you are a constant inspiration. I'm very grateful to all that you do. So they love fly humans. And I know they are too. Uh, they, they they think you're brilliant. So And, and I, I can't say enough. Buy the bloody book because it's going to be good. And and thank you so much for all you do. And I, I really can't, can't wish you enough success with it. I think it'd be brilliant. Thank um, you so much. It's it's such a pleasure to be able to sit here and talk to you about it because you and I have become friends over the years and mm. it's so brilliant. I love supporting Love Fly. I, I don't do it because anyone tells me to. I, I do it because I love Paul and what he's doing, but I also love, I, I love the fact that somebody might just be able to go and do something they've not previously been able to do as yeah. a result of something that one of us has been able to explain as part of the Love Fly community. And if I can add to that, then my work here is effectively done. Yeah, well, you do. You uh, you add tons, and uh, uh, and it's no small thing answering some of those questions. You always give a very detailed answer, and uh, it's very appreciated. And I like, try to go into as much detail as possible because you yeah. don't you don't need that level of detail. None of you need to know all of that. But I also understand that I'm a very much a person that wants to see what's beneath the surface. Mm. So I do that. Um, but you know what I would say is. Buy grounded and read it, but don't be grounded by your fear. How about that for a last Did you night? just work that out or is that something you've had ready? No, I literally just came up with that in this crazy little head of mine. <laughs> Funny old face in there, but I'm quite comfortable with it. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> Emma Henderson, thank you very much. You are awesome and I, I wish you tremendous success with this. You deserve it. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me on.